This is Oscar Osbo, Coffee in the Morning, and I'm here with Mr. Ray Williams, the TAF, the uh, the world-renowned underwater guru <laughs> who's been just about everywhere and did just about everything underwater and uh, did some uh, uh, amazing photography. Now, we're looking at Egypt right now, right, that you uh, have done, and you've done so many things before that. What what was your last assignment? Oh, my last above water, you mean? Um, I was in Afghanistan for two years and eight months. And uh, th again, that's another story for later on down the road, I'm sure. But, All right. But, but as far as this is concerned, the, the diving year, it's um, in the Red Sea. Uh, we started off from a place called Hugada, and we um, traveled on a liverboard. And uh, we went down to the Sudan, uh, just off the coast of Sudan there. And uh, it was actually, I, I was sent along with uh, Mark Padilla, and he's an English photographer. He does a lot of uh, TV work and uh, a lot of work with the royal family and, and such people like that. And he was hired to do um, the photography for a magazine called Skin Diver Magazine. Okay. And um, he owed me a favor, actually. And he called me up one day and said, what are you doing next week? I said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, well, I got a job for you in the Red Sea. I'm there. So I, I flew from, uh, from home here in Michigan to... Uh, London, stayed the night in London with him uh, and his family, and then we, we, we took off to Hugada. And uh, it's really interesting because uh, a lot of the people on this, this boat, um, um, I, I'm sure you heard of a film called Schindler's List. Right. Yeah, uh, starring um, Liam Nielsen. Well, that's Mark there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they, they were a film crew that worked on uh, Schindler's List and they were taking a break and they came on this liveaboard with us. There were about 18 people on there, you know, so it was, it was, a, it was a good good time of diving. Water was crystal clear, a lot of current. Um, saw a lot of uh, sharks and um, really, really enjoyed the dive in there. Beautiful place. Now, wh why, were they, why were they putting water on their face before they went diving? I didn't Actually, he was, he was rinsing off. That he's come out of the water, just oh, getting okay. the salt off. The off salt off, face. okay. Yeah. And this, as you notice, these are like sheer drop-offs. Um, the, the, the little islands, these little, I mean, there's no grass or anything there. They are rock. And um, they, they, you step off, <laughs> if you want to call it a beach or the shore, you go straight down 2,000 to 3,000 feet straight wow. down. Yeah, it's fantastic. Really uh, interesting uh, marine life. Um, a lot of uh, anemones and different type of fish like this and uh um you know it's uh, and these that's nemo yeah nemo yeah with these little clownfish <laughs> oscar fishes in there like yeah yeah and you go near them they'll they dart inside and uh, these are actually poisonous um so other fish you know won't go near those fish so they they, they actually have a tolerance to the um the the, the toxins in that uh, that bush uh, animal. Type, yeah. okay. They can live in there, but any other fish who try to get them will, will die. And, and what it eats it then, or what? Somehow, I mean, what does it what does it do? Well, it, it's it's just uh, it's called an anemone, and they, they, there's lots of them there. You know, it's and that's a good sign that the, the water is very uh, clean, mm -hmm. and uh, so they thrive there. But the little clownfish, they, they live inside there. They don't venture very far from that. Okay. Um, so the the fish that feed on other fish, you know, I mean, they know to stay away from those things. Otherwise, they'll get stung and they'll yeah they'll die. But they'll die and then what? Who eats it? Um, the anemone. Okay. Yeah, it'll just dissolve into it. And oh, okay, it dissolves. It. It's okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like a digest digestive system or something in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, um, they so you can't touch that either. Yeah, then. you can touch them. Oh, okay. it's, it's fine. I mean, you, you don't go and touch them, but you can put your hand in there and stuff. Some people have a slight reaction to it, but um, really, you know, it doesn't harm us. But other fish that uh, don't have the tolerance for it, yeah, they they even die. Okay. So it's it's kind of like a jellyfish type. Yeah, you okay. could see it like that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, these little clownfish are territorial, and you'll see them dart back. And there you go. There's one there down in and out but uh, the actual I was on that liverboard for, for um, it's called a sea serpent and uh, we did like a week 
sailing and diving. So we went from northern Egypt down to the coast of Sudan. And uh, that was before the sea pirates. <laughs> so um, it, it was quite good. Now, when you you did this, you did this for what reason exactly? What, were the, what was the purpose um, for this? The, the reason for this, I was um, a skin dive, like I said, skin diver magazine hired Mark to do the still photography and write um, about the experience in the Red Sea. Okay. And um, I met Mark in Hawaii uh, when I was on another filming assignment and um, at that time um, he'd been signed up by um, Yorkshire Television to, to work on another film. Okay. Uh, which I was a cameraman on and uh, I was also a diving instructor and what had happened, he'd come along and uh, I think there was, um, <laughs> how could I say, he'd signed up to do the job but he wasn't certified underwater. Oh, okay. The camera guy. Okay. He's a phenomenal camera guy but he wasn't certified. Certified diver you mean? Yeah, or? certified diver. So uh, we got to Hawaii and when I, um, I was actually the dive superintendent as well on the dive film. Um, we, uh, I asked him to you know, show me the C card and stuff. And he said, what's a C card? And oh, oh we got a problem. <laughs> it turned out he'd done four dives. Okay. And uh, so rather than getting fired, you know, I, um, he asked me if I would, you know, could, could I certify him? Uh, so eventually we had three days off because um, we had acclimatized to Hawaii and two of the guys were ill. And um, so we, we couldn't do any diving for, for three days, four days actually. And so what I did, I took him for myself and David, who was the star of the show. Um, we went and did some checkout dives and um, he actually turned out to be an awesome diver. So yeah. I certified him open water. And then as the, the program evolved and we traveled down to Australia and Guam, I actually certified him as an advanced diver. So he, by the end of it, he became an advanced diver and was very, very good. And he said, one day I'm going to repay you. Sure enough, a couple of months later, I had that phone call. There he is right there. Uh, I had the phone call and he took me over to um, Egypt on, okay. on that assignment. So, yeah. But but, no, he, but when I, I guess what I was, was saying is he's taking pictures, but what about this video? Has this video ever been seen? No, no. This... Um, yeah, it's been shown in in, uh, in Britain, but okay. um, I, you, you know, it, this was like off the cuff. I mean, Mark uses it for promotion or his business, and uh, but no, it's it's part of my billion. Part of your ma your many <laughs> many hours of footage you, yeah, you've I taken mean, underwater. Yeah, yeah, you know. Okay. But um, it was. Uh, uh, that that recently we saw that uh, like it was like a, almost like a flower that kept opening and closing. Was and that me. because of the cur the current? Yeah, or? well, you can see it moving back and forth. Yeah. And uh, these these are out in the middle of the Red Sea, these little islands, mm -hmm. and you can see it's a vertical drop straight down. We're, we're at a depth of about 100 feet there, 100 to 130 feet, and um, these are called uh, pikefish, and uh, they you know they're everywhere all there. Hmm. But um, yeah, there's a strong current and it's drift, what they call drift diving, where you jump in and there's no way you can come back to where you started because the current's too strong, so you just go down the walls. Okay. And um, goldfish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, some of the fish were phenomenal, you know. Yeah. Colors. Huge sharks. I saw a few huge sharks. And dolphins, you know, and, uh, incredible experience with the dolphins. And uh, you know, obviously, you can see the, the, the water yeah, the current, rushing there. Yeah. And, uh, so you don't want to get caught in those spots. You know, you can cut the pieces on the on the coral. Now, as far as that coral, I was going to ask about that. The coral, it's it's very very sharp. I take it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's good sharp, pretty sharp. You get cut pretty easy, so you, you stay away from it. You know, and, and you, you, you're fine. Um, Again, you, you know, on these sort of dives, you, you're at the depth of about 100 foot normally. And uh, you, you go, you, you know, because I'm a diving instructor, I mean, Mark and I did our own thing. Um, you know, the dive masters who run the operation uh, know how experienced we are. And uh, so it was just him and I most of the time, you know. Okay. And uh, let us, because he had to get footage for his 
um, photography or, or films, I should say, pictures, photos, whatever. And uh, so it was, it was a good, good time. Now is he yeah. still he still doing that then? Yes, yeah, he still does that, and he does a lot in the TV world right now. He works on a lot of English um, productions, and uh, so he's, he's he's quite a busy guy. He travels quite a lot extensively. But none of his stuff seems to make it over here to no, the, no, he's, America. He's, no, he, he's sort of his niche is in Europe. Okay. So that's why they don't uh, see much of him here. He's worked with, although he has worked with that. Uh, one time, Charlton Aston, uh, he did some uh, photos for him. Madonna, uh, he's got some great stuff on Madonna, and, and a lot of other set celebrities. The royal family, he, he does stuff with the royal family, Prince William, and all those. All right? underwater, right? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. He's, he's so that, is that that's just a reef right there? Or? Yeah, it, yeah. It's a wall. It's, it's a wall? the edge of the island. Okay. And you, you know, it's it's. It looks pretty murky, um, but again, it's you know, it's it's uh, current is moving quite fast. The color is pretty phenomenal too, as far as some of the yeah for the that colors depth, down there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, usually because the, the colors will sort of uh, lose color. Blend, yeah. yeah, the deeper you go, the less and less color you see, you know, unless you take lights. But uh, again, we we down 100, 120 feet right now, and these two are, are English. People that were on the on the on the dive boat too. How many different types of fish do they have over there? Oh, lots and lots. I mean, do you do you know the fish, or you you'd have to kind of know the fish too to know what to stay away from, wouldn't you? Or? Yeah, yeah. It it's really is not a lot of stuff that can hurt you in the water. You, you know, I mean, uh, you just use common sense. You don't like that thing there's a trigger fish. Yeah. You just shot out. Um, the, that one's a, a little angel fish, but um, the um, you, you just stay if you're not sure of anything, you stay away from it. Yeah. Don't touch it. You know, obviously, a shark. You yeah. Know, chasing sharks around. Wow, well, you do. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's different. I'm trained. <laughs> yeah. Because there's some footage that we probably can't show about you feeding sharks because it was part of a television show in yeah. in uh, England. But uh, yeah, you've you've uh, done some stuff as far as camera work going underwater. The first one down to film uh, uh, this this guy f feeding sharks. Oh yeah, yeah, down in the Bahamas there. Yeah. And a couple of times, uh, I guess the sharks attacked your camera. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, one um, hit the camera into my face, and uh, I ended up with a nosebleed. Oh, it hit me. that's not good. No, uh, and then I'm thinking, <laughs> oh my god. I'm in the water with all these sharks, and yeah. this is a parrot fish. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, I was filling up the blood pretty bad, and I I remember clearing my mask, and then the blood go, but they didn't do anything, you know, mm. I'm still here. But uh, they were more interested in eating the fish. But, uh, yeah. I, so I thought I thought the blood kind of attracted them, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does, but I, I, I think... Um, they had enough blood around with the yeah, with the with, fish that they were eating. They were okay. more interested in the fish than me. Than God. But no, I, I've never had a problem. I, I have had a problem with a shark at one time, but I was down off Australia years ago. But uh, you know, I'm still here. And what what about uh, um, the stingrays, that kind of thing? Yeah, stingrays. You'll see some stingrays in few on here. Not not here, but uh, on another assignment I was on in the Caribbean. We feed the stingrays, you know, and uh, the thing is, a wild stingray. Well, they're all wild, but uh, stingrays that you'll see later are, are somewhat tame now because you know people feed them, yeah. and they lo lose their fear of, of uh, uh, humans, so they they're not defensive at all. I mean, you can play with them the way you want. And the only time there's been accidents, like uh, you know the. Everybody heard about Jeff Irwin when he died. Right. You know. Um, the crocodile hunter. Yeah. Actually, I was going to go to work with him on a film too, but you know, he died before we got there. Um, was um, it, what happened with him? He swam over a wild one, which was covered in the mud, uh, real t too close. He didn't see it, and he hit him with a tail. You know, and the barb penetrated his heart and you know killed him. So uh, 
I was unfortunate, but I've only ever seen two um, people that get injured by stingrays with barbs, and they were both accidents. Mm. You know, they they were playing with them, bringing them up to the surface, and then letting them go. And one of the divers tried to swim down with him again, and he sort of impaled himself on a on a stingray's barb in the knee. So pretty painful for him, but it wasn't intentional. Like I say, the whole the whole accident that happened in his heart that's kind of like unbelievable that it yeah. happened to hit there right oh yeah it was man, it, it was meant to be huh <laughs> you know it was, it was un- his time yeah it was unfortunate you know but um you know things happen but like i tell everybody in the water you know there's nothing in the water that's going to hurt you really it's um just use common sense you, you know there's certain things snails uh, certain snails you shouldn't touch them. really Oh yeah, they can they can kill you. Snails? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, they have a little barb in them, like a little harpoon, and uh, every year people die from them. Hmm. Uh, where they pick them up and put them in their pocket because they look pretty, and next thing you know, they get hit by a little barb and it's a neurotoxin in it, hmm. so they die pretty quick. See, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. This is a night dive on a reef now, and. Um, I think we're going to see a, uh, an octopus. I thought it was a plastic bag in the water. <laughs> and uh, it, it's actually uh, an octopus feeding at night. And, uh, but it wasn't like uh, four times as big as an actual human. No, it's just a <laughs> no, I just did it one. I don't know. Have you ever seen a huge octopus at all? No, the biggest yeah. I've ever seen is about two foot. Yeah. And that's, that's big, no. Uh, I know for a fact that they have some big ones off... Um, Seattle, you know, um, for the northwest there, um, in the kelp beds. I mean, they, they, they can go like six foot. Hmm. Huge, huge things. They're very, very powerful. Like, you know, I've handled little ones and stuff. But uh, they can be uh, quite, uh, they're very, very intelligent. Um, they're curious. They like to, you know, see what's going on and stuff like that. Um, but again, they they usually do their own thing. They won't bother me much. Mm. Um, some of the night dives, like this, I mean, it's fantastic. You know, as long as you're not afraid of the dark, because uh, a lot of uh, different fish come out at night and uh, different creatures. Um, sharks, a lot. Of sh- <laughs> One time, I was in a place called Vanuatu, which is down by Australia. And uh, we'd gone on a dive at night. Um, it, I was a liverboard, and I was the first guy in the water. And I rolled over and went down. And um, my light didn't work, so I waited for everybody else to come down. And uh, when, when when the other guys come down with the lights, I was in a shoal of sharks, which is uh, reef sharks swimming around, you know. And, oh. <laughs> but again, you know, nothing. They were just curious, you know. Um, why do you, why do you think there's so many attacks that's reported on uh, you know close to shore with sharks and stuff? Then if they if they really don't seem to bother you when you're underneath there, yeah, I I think you know the panic or no, it, it's a lot to do with you know the food chain and stuff like that. A lot of um, sharks, they eat, uh, as everybody knows, seals and penguins and stuff like that. And I suppose you know um, if there's a shark right there. No, it's a parrot fish. Oh, okay. Sleeping. Yeah. Now, I don't think you can see it here, but when they sleep like this, their eyes are open, obviously. But there's a membrane, like a mucous membrane around it. Um, it looks like uh, cotton. You have a job to see it here, but he's, he's sleeping, he's out cold, and um, there's a mucous membrane that comes out of him, you know, and, and forms a cover around him. That's his early warning system, so if anything tries to attack him at night, it breaks the membrane and he's up and gone. Okay. Mm-hmm. Though he was smiling there a little bit. Yeah, I said he was shocked. <laughs> <laughs>